This video is going to show you how to read the information on a pattern envelope. This is the pattern that we would have used in class. Um, it is made by Simplicity. I have some other ones that are made by other um, commercial fabric companies. This one is called McCall's. Again, another Simplicity. Um, this one is a Quick Sew. We also have New Look. There are a lot of different commercial pattern companies out there. Most of your patterns you can buy at a fabric store or a craft store. Um, there are some online by individual designers, um, and theirs are going to look a little bit different, but they'll have mostly the same information. Typically, if you're going to buy a commercial pattern, you have a large catalog that you look through, um, and then when you find the design that you like, you're looking up the pattern number. Um, it's also going to indicate what size that the pattern will make. So for instance, on this one, it's number 1140 and it is one size. So it's one size that fits all. Um, this one, the number is 6251. And this is going to make an X small, small, medium, so on and so forth. And you can kind of see that information on some of these other patterns as well. Um, this one's up in the top left corner. So once you go and pull your pattern, then you basically look at the back side, and that is going to tell you a lot of information about what the things are that you need. It will have um, what we call views. So the same pattern will make different arrangements of or variations of the pattern. So this one we have different pockets. Um, with this one, it's a little bit thicker. You can see that it makes um, a variety of shirts, pants, onesies. Um, you could also turn those pants into shorts. Um, variations of the same thing. So each one of those letters is going to be called a view. So you decide which view you are going to make and then it will coordinate with um, fabric requirements. Now this one is kind of nice because it's all one size. There isn't a different fabric requirement for each size. So we'll go through this one and then we'll go through one that talks about different body sizes. Um, it will tell you how much fabric you will need for the various parts of this. So we would have done fabric or view B, we would have had contrasting pockets. So this one, your apron would have been seven eighths of a yard and for the pockets you would have needed three eighths of a yard. Now when we did it in class, it was actually easier to double this and do it double sided than it was just to do it single. Um, after you know how much fabric you want, you need to go and decide what type of fabric are you going to buy. They typically have fabric suggestions on the back of it of what would make um, a good result in your finished product with those things. Another thing that they'll talk about is notions. Notions are everything else you need to make your finished product besides the fabric. So in this case, we need thread or perhaps contrasting thread, that one's an optional. Scissors, shears, they're basically the same thing. Pins, needles, a seam ripper, because we're probably gonna make mistakes. Uh, chalk pencil, loop turner, pencils, all sorts of things to be able to, um, I just think we had another earthquake. Okay, moving on. Um, all those things to be able to um, I'm all distracted now, sorry. To be able to make that, um, the extra little things that you don't wanna get home and just have your fabric, just have your thread and then realize, oh, I needed something else and you don't have it and then you have to go back to the store. Okay, so when you're not making something that's one size that fits all, a lot of times they are going to have um, body measurements on the back somewhere. Um, this one actually has it on the flap of the envelope. So you take your body measurements to figure out what size you are. The sizes that patterns go by are not the same as you would have in ready to wear clothing. So you are basically just making clothes that fit your body. Um, the measurements that are gonna make a big difference, your chest measurement or your bust, the biggest part of your chest, I mean, you think about where your biggest and where your smallest, those are the places you need to know to make sure that your clothes are gonna fit you. 
um, your waist measurement, hip, back waist length, which is um, that big bone that sticks, at, sticks out at the bottom of your neck, all the way down to where it matches up with your natural waist. And wherever your measurements lie, that's going to be your size. So let's say, for example, in this one, we're going to make a medium size onesie. Onesie is view E. I know that's kind of small to read, but that's what it is. Um, oh, they call it a jumpsuit. All right, so jumpsuit, I'm going to be making a medium jumpsuit, so I need to come down to E and kind of line up where these two coordinate. Now, if I buy fabric that is 45 inches wide, I'm going to need seven and three eighths of a yard. If I'm buying fabric that is 60 inches wide, I only need three and a quarter yards. Now, it says for contrast, that's for like the wrist and the ankle part, um, I would need three eighths of a yard for that. It does tell me the notions that I would need. Um, since I am doing a jumpsuit, I need a 22 inch zipper to be able to get in and out of it. Now that would be something important that if you didn't pick up while you were getting all your fabric, it might cause you to stop any kind of progress. Um, you're also going to see finished garment measurements. Now, finished garment measurements are going to be bigger than body measurements. If you look at the clothes you're wearing now, they are not skin tight. You have some what we call ease that goes in it. The ease is the difference between your body size and the finished garment measurements. So um, something that we would maybe need to know for jumpsuit E, the width of each leg is going to be 12 inches. Um, sometimes they'll tell you the different lengths so you can adjust accordingly. So that's the information that you would find on a commercial pattern and answer the few questions that we have that go with it so that we can make sure you understand how to read the back of a pattern envelope.